Hello everyone, welcome to this webinar being held as part of public consultation on the Nelson Tasman 2022-2052 Future Development Strategy. My name is Tim O'Connell from the Tasman District Council Communications team. On behalf of the Nelson City and Tasman District Council, thank you so much for joining us and taking up this opportunity to take part in this portion of the consultation. We hope you get plenty of information from the presentation we're about to give. This is the second FDS that both councils have collaborated on. It's a strategy that outlines strategic growth options for future housing and business land in the region over the next 30 years. We want to hear your views on our choices for future development in the Nelson Tasman region. Needless to say, it'd be wonderful to be meeting with you all directly in a venue near you. However, such as our current state of affairs, this wasn't doable given the uncertainty of the COVID pandemic. We're still committed to moving forward with the FDS to ensure it can be adopted by both councils around July this year. This webinar is one of 17 that we've organized around the two districts during the consultation period, which runs through till the 14th of April. With your chance to influence how and where Nelson and Tasman grow in the future, the types of houses we're planning for, and where business development occurs. Our aim is for you to be fully informed on how the proposals may affect your community, and hopefully help when it comes time to make a submission. On that note, a consultation document is now available for you to read at your local library, customer service centre and online at either Tasman District Council or Shape Nelson websites. Uh, just search Future Development Strategy. Uh, these will also lead you to more information about the FDS as well as ways to make your submissions. Very important. So we have three speakers who will be presenting at this webinar. Uh, each person is heavily involved with the progress thus far on the uh, FDS, uh, along with a number of other uh, hardworking staff from both councils. Uh, first of all, we've got Tim Wallace. He's a senior associate with Barker and Associates. They're the consultants uh, leading on the uh, FDS. Uh, Chris Pawson uh, is also speaking. He's a senior anal analyst at Nelson City Council. And we also have Jackie Deans, who is a Tasman District Council Growth Coordinator. Uh, I'll now give each of them an opportunity to briefly introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Jackie Deans. I'm the Growth Coordinator from Tasman District Council. I'm going to be talking today a bit about the introduction to the Future Development Strategy, explaining what it is. And then also be speaking later, telling you about the sites that are proposed in the FDS for Tasman District. Hi, I'm Chris Paulson. Um, I'm a senior analyst at Nelson City Council. Uh, I'm going to be running through the growth predictions for um, Nelson and Tasman um, and doing a brief summary of the feedback that we've had to date, as well as later in the um, program doing a rundown of all of the Nelson areas. Hi there, my name is Cam Wallace. I'm a senior associate at Barker and Associates. We're a specialist town planning and urban design consultancy who've been assisting both Nelson and Tasman councils on the project. And I'll be covering off some of the technical details around the, uh, the actual strategy itself and, and discuss its kind of alignment with national policy direction and some of the practical um, realities of uh, development over the next 30 years. So there they are, uh, the three people who will be guiding you through the ins and outs of the FDS. Uh, just before they get started, I'd like to remind everyone that there will be an opportunity to ask questions at the conclusion of the presentation. If there is something you'd like answered, please type your inquiry using that Q&A function located at the bottom of the taskbar on your Zoom screen. We've left plenty of time for, to allow for your questions, so please don't hesitate to engage. This is what public consultation is all about. Well, without any further ado, uh, let's kick off this webinar uh, with our first presenter, Jackie Deans. Dana Koto, Jackie Deans speaking. I'm going to start the presentation on the Nelson Tasman Future Development Strategy, and I'm going to provide some introductory context as to what the strategy is all about. So the purpose of this webinar is to try and explain to our community about the proposal, which is currently out for consultation on the future development strategy. We're going to provide you with a bit more detail and explain the proposed growth areas that are in the strategy. And most importantly, we're going to provide you with information on how you can get involved in the process over the next few months. So what is a future development strategy? 
Well, hopefully you'll have seen from the animation um, on our website or that you've seen playing for this webinar that it's a 30-year high-level strategy. It basically um, indicates where future housing and business land in the Tasman and Nelson region may be situated. It's a high-level plan, as I've said, and um, it is an important plan in terms of informing other council plans. So as we see here on the diagram, um, the FDS is required under the Resource Management Act and also government national policy statements require councils like ourselves to prepare an FDS as well. But it does that once adopted, it does inform um, our resource management plans, our long term plans, climate change action plans, infrastructure strategies and financial policies. And it also trickles down to the plans below those as well, such as structure plans for certain areas and transport plans. So it's quite a pivotal plan which councils use and it helps to direct the strategic growth for the future. So next we're going to look at the process for preparing the future development strategy. When, when, when finished it will be about a 12 month process. Uh, we started in last July 2021 and as you can see here from the diagram we began with an opportunities and constraints analysis around the region and you can see the results of that analysis on our websites if you click on the GIS viewer. And then we moved on to assessing sites and growth options, spatial options. And during that time, we had a public engagement period in October 2021 when we asked the community to suggest sites that may be suitable for housing and business in the future. And from that process, we received um, suggestions for a large number of sites. And we ended up evaluating about 200 sites um, in Nelson and Tasman to assess their suitability for future development. So that took us to the end of last year and then we've spent the first couple of months this year actually drafting the FDS and evaluating the different growth options and we're currently at the public consultation um, stage in March 2022 which is going to finish in April. During this time there's also been ongoing engagement with EWI throughout with stakeholders who have largely been government agencies and we had our community engagement period last year and this is our formal consultation period. And we also ha have had workshops with both councils throughout the process. So there are certain things that an FDS can and can't do. It's a high level plan, so it sets out broad locations only for future growth for the next 30 years for future housing and business sites. It doesn't focus on detailed site boundaries at this stage. It does inform future council plans, but it doesn't change existing ones. And it spatially shows at a high level the trunk infrastructure that we may need to service these growth areas. So the FDS doesn't rezone land, that's the job of the resource management plans. And it also doesn't set out building design requirements and standards, that's too detailed for this level of plan. The FDS may suggest typologies of housing that are appropriate, such as medium density housing or high density housing, but it doesn't go as far as actually prescribing requirements of those buildings. I'll now go to hand over to Chris. Thanks, Jackie. So the National Policy Statement on Urban Development requires us to consider residential growth and business growth demands. Residential growth in Nelson and Tasman is primarily driven by migration to the area. With the border restrictions of the last, two, last year or two, most of the migration has been from other areas of New Zealand. Over the next 30 years, it's projected that there will be, be the need for an additional 21,000 to 29,000 homes, depending on whether the region experiences a medium or high growth rate. The existing 2019 FDS caters for around 14,000 additional homes, so not enough based on the current projected demand. This draft FDS plans for high growth as a result of Tasman in particular experiencing higher growth than project projected in their long-term plan. Business growth is split in the draft FDS into commercial and industrial activities. Demand for commercial business land is projected to be 
between 35 and 48 hectares over the next 30 years. For industrial land, it is projected that there will be a demand for 14 to 20 hectares over the same period. There is already enough zoned land in the respective resource management plans for these business activities on a region-wide basis, but there are some localised unmet demands around some of the smaller Tasman towns. Again, this draft FDS plans for the high growth scenario in response to the higher than expected growth in the Tasman region. Over the last six months or so, we've engaged with the community via webinars, stakeholder workshops, and with the youth councils. This web word map shows a visual representation of the issues raised to date, with the size of the text representing the proportion of times the issue has been raised. Issues like affordability, infrastructure provision, public space, and the detail of any strategy are clearly front of mind for a lot of people. Sustainability, protection of highly productive land, more intensification, accessibility and the natural environment are also among the issues commonly raised. This early feedback has been used in the development of the draft document out for consultation currently. In order to guide the preparation of the draft FDS, 11 outcomes have been developed with elected members of both councils and local iwi. These outcomes have been used in developing the assessment criteria used to assess each of the growth areas put forward. The outcomes are, number one, urban form supports reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by integrating land use and transport. Number two, existing main centres including Nelson City Centre and Richmond Town Centre are consolidated and intensified, and these main centres are supported by a network of smaller settlements. Number three, new housing is focused in areas where people have good access to jobs, services and amenities by public and active transport and in locations where people want to live. Number four, a range of housing choices are provided that meet different needs of the community, including papakaianga and affordable options. Number five, sufficient residential and business land capacity is provided to meet demand. Number six, new infrastructure is planned, funded and delivered to integrate with growth and existing infrastructure is used efficiently to support growth. Number seven, impacts on the natural environment are minimised and opportunities for restoration are realised. Number eight, Nelson Tasman is resilient to and can adapt to the likely future effects of climate change. Number nine, Nelson Tasman is resilient to the risk of natural hazards. Number ten, natural Nelson Tasman's highly productive land is prioritised for primary production. Number 11, all change helps to revive and enhance the Māori of Tita Ihu. I'll now hand over to Cam to cover off some of the more, some of the technical issues um, raised in the FDS. Thanks, Chris. Uh, now I'm here to talk to you today about the what the actual future development strategy is proposing. So our proposal is really split into two. It's a core proposal where we're seeking to accommodate uh, the vast majority of growth in a corridor along State Highway 6 between Atafai in the north and Wakefield in the south, as well as providing for some level of growth in Mokchueka and Mapua. And so within this area we think we can get around 26,000 new homes. The secondary part of that proposal is potential for new communities near Tasman Village and Lower Mutari, and there's potential for around 3,200 new homes in those areas. Now, the scenario, this, this proposal has been developed as a result of some detailed investigation around the actual constraints around development, so looking at issues like flooding or coastal inundation, and we also uh, assessed 189 potential growth sites as part of this process. Uh, so that was a detailed technical assessment with a range of um, officers from both councils and as part of that process we selected 102 sites um, to put forward as part of consultation which would um, help to deliver on this proposal. Now in terms of how that growth is spread out across 
both Nelson and Tasman. Um, there are variations depending on the inclusion of the secondary part of the proposal, but in terms of the core proposal, uh, almost 50% of growth is proposed to be accommodated via intensification and infill of the existing urban areas of Nelson, Richmond, Brightwater, Wakefield, Mapua and Motueka. 40% uh, is through uh, managed greenfield expansion. Now, some of this is already occurring or um, in more advanced stages of planning, um, areas like Marsden and Nafatu Valleys, uh, Richmond South and around Mapua. Uh, we have a small proportion um, set aside for further rural residential lifestyle areas. And we also are able to rely on some existing capacity in uh, greenfield and rural residential areas uh, within Tasman and Nelson um, to provide for some of that growth, an example being um, the currently undeveloped components of the Richmond West development. Uh, in terms of the splits between the councils themselves, so this is not necessarily the same between Nelson and Tasman. Um, if we're to look at Nelson, 65% of the growth in Nelson will be via intensification, where this drops to 24%. Uh, through Tasman, and this is largely a function of the constraints, uh, in particular for Nelson, um, due to the hills in the east, the coast in the west, um, very really limiting options for uh, greenfield growth in that area. So intensification is obviously a major component of the growth strategy, um, accounting for potentially up to 48% of all growth, and this is, uh, there are levels of intensification already happening throughout Nelson and Tasman. Um, but it's important to kind of understand what this might mean for you um, in the community. So we've used some benchmarking studies of uh, recent um, intensification that's come about from plan changes in places like Christchurch and also looking at what's been happening in um, some of the more um, advanced um, areas where they've had intensification for quite a while, like Auckland. And so we've made some assumptions around um, the amount of um, uptake around intensification. So. What we're assuming um, over over the next 30 years is around 15% of all existing parcels um, across the kind of urban area and residential areas will be redeveloped in that time. And that redevelopment will be at varying scales. So it might simply be uh, additional house um, put in the backyard. It might be the removal of a house and replacement with a duplex, or it may be a more comprehensive redevelopment for uh, a low height apartment building. So this diagram just shows that process. Um, so as we can see, kind of a um, indicative uh, present day low density residential neighborhood on the left, and then showing kind of what we envisage um, intensification to look like over the next 30 years. And it really is just um, very small scale, slow moving. So ultimately the, the existing character of neighborhoods doesn't actually change that much, but you do get some reasonably significant gains in the amount of population that may occur in any given neighborhood. Now supporting infrastructure is also going to be an essential component of the future development strategy. And so the core proposal has a benefit in our minds in terms of concentrating that growth along the State Highway 6 corridor between Atafai and Wakefield, that we can um, enable that growth through very targeted infrastructure upgrades. These include some general wastewater and potable water upgrades between Wakefield and Richmond to accommodate potential growth in those southern communities. There is also uh, wider wastewater upgrades in particular and stormwater upgrades um, throughout the urban areas to help accommodate increased uh, flows associated with intensification. And also critically, there'll need to be um, significant ongoing investments in increased frequency of public transport services, as well as new and improved walking and cycling infrastructure to help support uh, growth that isn't overly reliant on private vehicular travel. And in future phases of, of work, there'll also need to be uh, further analysis and um, work to ensure that other infrastructures such as new parks and schools are incorporated into these new communities. Now, Chris and Jackie are going to go through some of these areas in more detail later on in the presentation, but just in terms of getting a, a feel about um, the, the spread of growth across the areas. So um, these are some of the core areas we have uh, written on the left hand side, and this is just trying to demonstrate uh, how growth um, is occurring in each of these areas. So for example, Nelson City Centre, it's an existing urban area, so all that growth will be accommodated through uh, relatively high levels of intensification. 
uh, this can be contrasted with somewhere, say, like Mochiweka, where um, there is a, a lesser degree of intensification provided for, but there is some greenfield and rural residential development, which um, combines to, to give an approximate yield of 1,300 new dwellings uh, within the Motueka area over the next 30 years. And so this is just a very broad summary. So uh, obviously key, key areas when you're looking at these um, approximate yields in terms of new dwellings, uh, you know, Nelson City Centre and Nelson South, um, it's, a, it's a key growth area and, it, and it's accessible to the city centre, so it's, it's ideally suited for accommodating growth. Uh, around Stoke, Marsden Valley, Nafatu Valley and Saxton area, so the majority of that will be via greenfield growth in some of these previously identified greenfield growth areas. Uh, similarly, Richmond is a major um, area for growth in the future, so this will be accommodated through a mixture of medium density intensification and infill development, and the ongoing greenfield expansion around Richmond West and greenfield expansion in Richmond South. Now some of the smaller uh, rural townships across Tasman also are facing their own growth pressures and issues around housing demand. So we're also providing for uh, more moderate levels of growth in these areas. So currently, in, for example, in, in Takaka, we've identified the potential for, for 730 new dwellings spread across several greenfield and rural residential sites. And other areas like Collingwood and Tupperware are very uh, localised and um, specific areas for potential growth and expansion to uh, provide for some level of growth and development, although uh, the level of demand in some of these areas is slightly lower. Um, similarly, Murchison, we've got 260 homes potentially provided for through these growth areas, and as part of this process, we're really trying to gauge some initial feedback on the suitability of all these areas for the community. Now, the secondary part of the proposal, the, the potential new communities at Tasman and Lower Mutri, uh, they have the potential to yield approximately 3,200 new dwellings, so really really they become their own new townships in a way. And so at that level, they're, they're likely to be able to support some level of uh, retail and commercial uses as well. And that yield would come through a combination of greenfield and rural residential development. And that greenfield would be probably at varying densities where you might see up to medium density terraced housing type development occurring in those areas. Now it's important to note that not all growth is associated with uh, new new homes or dwellings. Um, there's also a very important um, need to ensure that there is sufficient land available for business uses. And so business uses can really be spread out, split out into your smaller retail uses, your commercial office type activities, and your industrial activities. And these all have different uh, locational requirements. So a lot of the retail and commercial growth can be just accommodated through intensification in the existing Nelson City Centre area around Stoke Town Centre and Richmond Town Centre. Uh, light industrial is obviously a bit more specific. It needs to be located along good transport corridors to provide access through to the port and airport. So we've identified quite a large area of industrial land around the Hope region, uh, Richmond South. And we've also identified um, additional industrial land in some of the smaller Tasman areas to help support what is not insignificant population growth in those areas. Um, this includes Brightwater and Wakefield, as well as Tupperware to help support the growing hops industry. Uh, now I'm going to pass it up back off to Chris, and he's going to run through some of the Nelson sites in a lot more detail for you. Thanks, Cam. Once we've been through the process of assessing sites and spatial growth options, we end up with some recommended development patterns. This slide shows the central Nelson area and the recommended development patterns. As you can see, there's a mix of medium and high density development, with the highest density in building heights in the CBD and the close surrounds. The draft FDS also proposes increased density along transport corridors such as Nelson South, either side of Waimea Road. There's also a base level of infill allowed for, as well as up to three-storey buildings in the areas shown in pink. Some of these areas are subject to the effects of sea level rise, and as a result, have been assessed further as part of a plan change process. It is important to understand that not all of the areas are going to be developed at this density, as Cam has shown in the previous slides, and the development will take place gradually over the next 30 years.
in the Maitai Valley and in the Atifai Hilltops. There are two growth areas proposed, shown in yellow with a combined yield of around 1100 homes. A further medium density area is proposed in Dodson Valley. In Stoke, there is a high density core proposed with a surrounding medium density area. The growth areas shown in yellow are greenfield areas in Narfatu Valley, Marsden Valley and the Saxon area, which have the potential to provide around 3,500 homes combined. The draft FDS proposes high density options in the suburbs either side of Waimea Road, as well as either side of State Highway 6 in Tahunanui. A medium density area is proposed for the remaining Tahunanui area. Again, these areas are also subject to a climate change response project underway as part of a potential plan change. I'll now hand over to Jackie to run through the Tasman slides. Thanks Chris. So our proposals for Richmond and the FDS are housing intensification around the town centre, extending as far as Salisbury Road, and then we have some managed greenfield expansion sites. Those are mainly in Richmond South, um, along White Road there, which you can see. And we also have some greenfield housing sites in the foothills, T40 and T114. We've also identified potential for a mixed use development down Lower Queen Street in Berryfield Drive at T115. And that could be apartments that would join the commercial development that's going up there. And then finally, we have some business sites, T35 and T122. These would be proposed for some kind of commercial mixed business type uses and would help serve the growing population of Richmond. Moving on to Brightwater, Brightwater just faced some challenges in terms of highly productive land and also flood risk. However, we've landed on some opportunities around Brightwater. So we have um, also intensification proposed around the centre of Brightwater, as you can see on the map there in the pink. We've also got a small commercial opportunity identified in the town centre. And we have some light industrial sites potentially to the south of the town centre at T171 and T105. T105 is on highly productive land, so be interested in your views as to whether or not you think that's actually needed. And then the remaining proposals for Brightwater are greenfield expansion for housing, shown in the yellow around the town centre, and then some rural residential housing opportunities, that's lower density, out at Teapot Valley. At Wakefield, we have identified opportunities for intensification of housing in the town centre, shown in the bright pink. And then we've also a number of greenfield sites shown in the yellow, Pigeon Valley being the largest, where there's also an element of rural residential housing, lower density housing. And then finally, we also have potential for a light industrial site at T108. Similar to Brightwater, that's also on highly productive land and so be interested in the community's feedback to see if they feel that's needed. Now we know that Mochueka is one of our towns where there's huge demand for people to live. Unfortunately, it also coincides with being a town that faces quite a few challenges in terms of constraints. So we have highly productive land and we have um, flood risk and coastal inundation. And that makes it very difficult for actually to find sites in this town. As a consequence, there isn't much new here from the last FDS. We have the large intensification area shown in bright pink. That's greenfield and brownfield housing intensification. And then we have the Teofina Marae site at T15, where there's some Papakayanga proposed. And then we have the rural residential housing option at Mitten Hills, T T17. Similar to Mochueka, we know that Marpura is a popular place for people to live, and there are real demands for housing here as well. Similar again to Mochueka, there aren't many new sites for Marpura. These greenfield um, sites shown here were actually in the last FDS in 2019. We're proposing here to intensify the current zoning from rural residential, low density housing to medium density housing. 
and those errors are shown in the yellow. Any remaining opportunities for Marpur really amount to infill in the pink hatched area. Moving on to Golden Bay, Tarkaka also faces a number of constraints. The town itself is located over an unconfined shallow aquifer, and so we have to be very careful about bore contamination. It also um, comprises much highly productive land and also um, suffers from flood risk. So it is a very challenging place to find new housing sites for, and that's why most of these sites end up being away from the centre where some of those hazards are less. So we have some limited expansion around the town, as you can see with some um, proposed sites there in yellow. Um, we have some um, rural residential sites proposed, which is the yellow hatched area. And then our business sites are in the purple, um, T182 and T145, which is out near Park Avenue. We probably have more options here than we actually need for Tarkaka, but we'd like to get community's feedback as to what they think are the best options that we're showing. In Collingwood, we have shown here a potential residential area at T53 in Excellent Street. And adjoining it, we've also shown T158, a potential new commercial area in the vicinity of the area school and health post. And we see these two proposals as resilient opportunities for Collingwood in the future in the face of sea level rise. Now, Murchison, as we understand it from speaking with the community, has some quite specific requirements for housing. There's a need for both rural residential living options, as well as smaller, perhaps more affordable dwellings in the town centre for key workers. So our proposals for Murchison, and as we show here, we've got some rural residential options in the valleys, as you can see all those peripheral sites. And then we've also earmarked what we hope are some good options for new housing sites much closer into the town centre, shown in the yellow. And finally, we've also identified a new area for light industry at T148. In Tapawera, we've similarly identified um, a residential area and a light industrial area. Um, we know that there's a bit of explosion of the hops industry going on there, so there's a demand for both more housing and for more um, workshop, engineering workshop type premises. So our housing site is shown there on the, on the eastern edge of the town at T157, and that's a site which is hazard free. Um, some sites further north do have some problems in that respect. And then our light industrial site in Tadmore Valley Road is shown at T192, and we'd like your feedback on those options. And finally, in St Arnold, while most of the housing in St Arnold is actually um, holiday homes, up to 60% of the housing there we understand is holiday homes according to census data, and perhaps not the same need for permanent homes, we were asked to assess a couple of options in St Arnold. So it's shown on the map here, we have the um, rural residential option at Carreri Top House Road, T181, which is a large site potentially. And we have another site at T195, which has been put forward for Papakeanga housing in Massey Road. And now I'll just also cover the secondary part of the proposal on consultation. So this comprises a potential new community near Tasman Village and in Lower Mutri at Rayburn Road. As you can see on the map here, the sites in yellow, which are shown T166 to 168 and T136. So there's three sites near Tasman Village, and then there's also an additional site at Rayburn Road. And that site at Rayburn Road could accommodate about a thousand dwellings. And um, altogether for the Tasman and Lower Mutri sites, you'd be looking at about 3000 dwellings potentially. Now, the area in between the Lower Mutri site and the Tasman Village sites is currently zone rural three. And there's a possibility that our resource management plan could look at the rezoning of that land to make it rural residential. And then that housing development would, in effect, link those two areas together to form a new community. 
So while we don't necessarily need this option to meet our housing demand numbers, because that can be met by the core part of the proposal, which is mainly expansion along State Highway 6 and in our Tasman rural towns, we're putting this forward as a secondary part of the proposal for our community to provide feedback on. So we're on to the next steps. We'd encourage people to put in their submissions on the draft future development strategy, and they need to be with us by five o'clock on the 14th of April. After that, if you wish to speak at the hearing, the hearings will be held in late April and in May. And then there'll be a process of deliberations with the future development strategy subcommittee, which will comprise six councillors, three from each council, and potentially EWE representatives as well. And then the FDS may be adopted by the Nelson Tasman Joint Committee in July this year. So we encourage you to get involved and please do visit our websites as shown there, the web pages. And if you have any queries you want to put in writing to the team, then please use those email addresses. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jackie. Also, a big thanks to Cam and Chris. Uh, some great information coming out of that presentation. Hope you found that informative, enlightening, maybe even just offered a bit of clarification on one or two areas. Uh, that's the whole point of these webinars, just to make sure that you have as much information as possible, uh, getting an overview uh, as we move forward uh, into receiving your feedback. Uh, on that note, as Jackie just pointed out, we are taking your submission right through to the 14th of April. Uh, this closes at 5 p.m. Uh, heaps of time. Uh, and uh, consultation documents, they are available at the Nelson City and Tasman District Libraries, also at our customer service centres, also online. Uh, that's where you'll get lots of information and also an opportunity to make a submission. Uh, Tasman.govt.nz forward slash FDS or shape.nelson.govt.nz forward slash future development strategy. Uh, we really look forward to hearing from you and uh, helping us uh, shape the Nelson Tasman that you want to see. Now, having received a plethora of information today, I'm sure there's a number of questions or discussion points on people's minds, uh, whether it's a long-standing question or something that's just emerged over the course of the presentation. Uh, something you support about the proposal, something you might not support, just your overall thoughts even on the uh, on the core and secondary parts of the proposal. Uh, we'd certainly like to uh, open the floor up now, so I'd just like to hand things back to the team to uh, field some of those inquiries.